Hey guys, welcome to Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Sam Kobiak. Today, we're going to take a minute. We're going to talk about putting new wheels on a vehicle. What you need to think about. This is an important one because there are a lot of variables that come into this. And if you get this wrong, you're not going to be happy. This is vitally important that you... It, it's, it's a very hard decision with many, many options and many bad decisions that can be made and many good ones. So we're going to talk about it for a minute here. My wife on our Ram, this is her Ram 2500, which you guys have seen other videos on. Um, but this is her daily driver. Um, I know I'm checking in my man card because I drive a little cheap Cherokee, uh, and this is what my wife drives, but uh, she loves it, you know, and she does not drive as much as I do. So if I'm going to put tons and tons of miles on a vehicle and burn them out in two years, I would rather drive that and burn it out and use it for work, where my wife can put less miles on this, we get to keep it a lot longer and take care of it. So, um, and she loves it. So this is her truck for all practical purposes. Um, our family vehicle, her truck, any way you want to cut it, but she wanted the wheels she wanted it to have a little more aggressive of a stance she you know she liked the original one it had original black ones on it if you watch my other videos you've seen the wheels that were on this originally they were also black because it had the blackout package uh and i even put bigger tires on them i put uh, uh i don't remember what size tires they were 34 11 50s or something i put on there at the time and uh they were a fantastic tire with a great setup but she did not want she wanted them to stick out a little more and have a little more aggressive stance so when you look at this you can see that those wheels stick out just a little bit that gives it that little bit of attitude to it which i'll walk you around and this is a very important decision that you have to make to what you want to do or don't want to do with this so as we look at this i'll bring you around the back here if i cannot slip and fall it's everything's melting here um but as you see the stance that's on that you can see they stick out just enough to give a little punch and a little attitude to it, which is exactly what she wanted. That decision did not come very easily. That was not something I just said, oh, okay, I just want this, and you get it done. You have to know what you're looking for, and there's considerations. We're going to break them all down for you so that you know how to do this. First off, your first thing you're going to want to do with any car that you're doing this to or truck you're doing it on is you're going to have to do some research. That research will be in a the, in the series of uh, checking other people's stuff on forums, going to places like I got mine from, um, um, actually I'll put a link to it, I think it was Extreme Off-Roads or Extreme Wheels. I'll, I'll look. Uh, they gave me a great package deal. I bought these as the rim the tire mounted, or I mean the rim and tire mounted, balance, TPS sensors and everything in them. They showed up on a pallet on the back of a semi truck and I just mounted them right on there. So very simple and easy to do. They were already 100% done and ready for me. All I had to do was bolt them on. I even got the new lug nuts and everything and I got them for a great price. Uh, again, I'll probably run the name of the place I got them from on here for you, but you can get them that way um, from a few places. But you want to be able to go to places like that. Uh, you got CJ Off-Road, other places where they actually will show you examples of vehicles like yours with huge galleries of them and they tell you what the specs are on these wheels if they fit right if they've had to be modified because uh, what you can do stock is different versus what you do if you had a leveling kit this is stock this truck is 100 percent stock we do not have a leveling kit on here but if you have a leveling kit that changes everything if you have a lift kit that changes everything uh sorry it's awful dirty um but uh um, so all that stuff is going to come into very uh, be a variable that you're going to have to deal with and take into consideration when you're doing this. Um, so your first step is to figure out what it is that you're looking for out of that truck. How aggressive you want it to be. How far you want that stance. How big of wheels you want. When you find that combo that you're looking for on this research, then you can start looking and you want to make sure you're going to get proper fitment, things like that. Because here's the variables. Let's just dive right into that because that's what a lot of you guys are worried, talking or are, are interested in. So if we look at this here. When you look and you're about to buy a wheel, let's come over here where the light's better for you. So on a wheel, you're going to have your rim size, which is the diameter, or not just the diameter. See, here we went from 20s to 18s. I wanted 18s on here because then I can air them down. We take this truck off-road all the time. It lives in the woods. And with that, I have now with 18-inch wheels, I have so much sidewall that I can air this tire down and get a bigger foot pr footprint. With 20-inch wheels, you don't have that luxury and you can't really air them down as well. You can, but not as well, and you don't have as much protection from uh, rocks and stuff like that. 
like that on the sidewalks with a 20 inch rim that comes up higher or down lower you have less tire to give you that protection so it's all personal preference so i mean there's no right or wrong but for me i wanted to go from 20s to 18 inch rims I also, now, so you got to figure out the diameter of the rim you want, then the width of the rim, okay? How wide that is across here on the rim is going to matter. These are 9-inch rims. If I went with 10-inch rims, that rim would be wider, would pull this tire more and stretch that, give that kind of a stretched look. If I went with an 8-inch rim, it would give more of this big bubble that you see here because the rim would now be inside an inch more, so that tire would curl more giving more protection again decisions that you have to make there is you could run tens on this you could run eights you could run nines you can do whatever you want we you know after my research i chose this nine inch rim for the size tires we want because it gives good as you can see it gives good sidewall protection you can see at nothing i'm not going to hit a curb and get curb rash uh, and i got the protection i want and it gives that it gives what we're personally after so it is all a personal preference sorry i'm kind of close there but I'm, I'm in tennis shoes and i'm not going in this you know knee deep snow and hanging out in here but um but so that's the consideration you're gonna have to take in is the rim diameter and the rim width Okay, then you have offset. Offset is what is going to give you this stance. The more negative offset you go, the farther the tire is going to stick out away from the vehicle. Positive offset is going to bring it in. How that happens is this point right here where everything is mounting to your, your hub, okay? If you go with a negative offset, that moves this part of the rim inward and all of this outward. Okay, so that brings that in and this out, which moves the whole wheel out. Positive offset will take this and move it this direction, which sucks the wheel into the wheel well more. So that's your negative, and, and it's not, <coughs> you can't just say, oh, I want a, um, I want a negative, uh, you know, I want a negative 20 um, offset on this wheel, and it's going to work for every single truck or every car. Because every single vehicle, this point right here where your hub is, is different depths and offsets on every different vehicle. So it's very selective to each vehicle and how much it is. So uh, you have to set find that calibration of wheel offset versus rim th uh, thickness of rim, the, the width of the rim that you want, and the wheel offset and the tire size to make sure that you're getting what you're looking for. We went with a mild look. Now keep in mind, my truck does not have fender flares but it gives me that perfect stance that I'm looking for right there. Now, if I had fender flares that stuck out another inch here, then I would have went with more offset to get those out of the fender flares to give that that same kind of look. This is all, again, very personal, very important that you figure it out so that you get exactly what you're looking for. Tire-wise, you also, when you start looking at your tire sizes, you have to take into account to make sure you will have clearance on all your suspension components when you turn and you go into full lock and you turn like here when we turn this wheel we are coming right in there close we're not hitting but we are close to that so you have to take into consideration uh, on a stock truck or if you're lifting what you can do to make sure you clear all of your suspension components and all of your spots on here when we turn this wheel in it comes right next to here you have to weigh all those options now tire size on this we went with what this is actually taller than a 35 you know most commonly used is a 35 1250 okay pretty much 85 percent of all these trucks are running you know they put wheels on they put a 35 35 inch tall by 1250 well, in Falcon, which is a tire I want, that 35 12, 50 was wider than this, but it was also shorter because it was, the 35 was actually only a 34 and 3 quarter. This one is a 35 and a quarter tall, so it's a half inch taller than a 35 12, 50, but it's not 12, 50 wide. It's 11.7. So uh, what are these? I can't remember when I bought them. Uh, they, these are a 285 75 18 um, and uh, that, so that's what we have on these so they give me that height um, taller than a 35 12 50 but they are just a, they're a little bit narrower but for my wife that's the look she wants she did not want the quote unquote and not that these are bad but they the quote unquote uh, roller skate look <clears throat> she did not want it to look like a, her truck was sitting on these super big wide sticking out roller skate tires um, 
And there's nothing wrong with that. But for her, this was the look she wanted. This is her truck. Myself, I probably would have considered going with 35-1250s myself. But uh, this is her look, and she loves it. And uh, and actually, I, I do too. I think I think she nailed it. I think she got it perfect. But that is the considerations you have to take into account. And, and again... As I said, there is no one size fits all or one size fits every vehicle. You're gonna have to do some research on this. It is, there's, there's no shortcutting it. If you just go to a, a tire shop and tell them you want new wheels, there, you, you never know what you're gonna get. Take the time. Put in a couple hours on some forums, put in a couple hours on some, some websites, some tire shop sites, like I said, CJ Off-Road, there's a few of them. I'll probably link a couple down here for you in the bottom of the description that have good galleries on them for you to see this stuff. Um, and you can get them, but you want to make sure that you're going to have the clearance for the whatever wheels you put on so that you're not going to have suspension issues. There's so many people out there that are running these, running bigger wheels on these trucks and they can't turn their wheels more than three quarters of a turn. That may work great for people living in a subdivision and these uh, brodozer type vehicles that never see dirt ever in their life and are just meant to look cool. You know, they got the fancy lights in there and that's all good and fine, but that's not what we need. I need a tool in the woods that I can beat up, bounce through some of the biggest mud holes you can find, uh, you know, fight over roots and rocks and and, you know, that kind of stuff. I am going to articulate the suspension at full lock turned all the time. And I'm going to be smashing down on it. And I need clearance. So I need my tires to work for that. If they're rubbing, if this tire here starts rubbing on that control arm at three quarter lock and I can't turn no more, that is defeating the purpose of what I need. Um, so for me, there's a certain level of things we're looking for. Your goals may be different, but that's why we have this set up like this. And I think it turned out perfect. So... To recap, figure out what size you can put on your truck so you know. Find that out. Once you figure out what's like even on this Jeep. These are the biggest tires I can fit on here. Stock rims. Biggest tires I can fit on this Jeep without rubbing. Now, and that was even stock. And I put it on there. I put these on there stock. Now I have a one and a half inch lift on this Jeep. But it's when even when it was stock, I drove it for 2,500 miles stock with these tires with no issue. But you look at this and you would go, there is no way you could turn that tire and that not rub. Well, guess what? I do this thing, I drive this thing through the woods like crazy and I get zero rub. Is it close? It is so close. But it does not rub, not even a little bit. And I get full functionality out of that wheel, okay? Because I did my research. Do your research. Make sure that you're gonna, it, it is worth a couple hours of your time and I can't tell you there's a one spot fix everything for this, but I will give those links below. Find the tire sizes that you're looking for the rim size you're looking for, start researching on it, and then you have to figure out the rim width based on the tire you're going with. If you're going, give you an example again, this is 11, about 11 and a half inch wide tire, and it is on a nine inch rim, and you can see the amount of offset in that tire, or I mean the amount of rollover in that rim, which is actually pretty good, actually probably best way to see it's like this, but you can see it. How much rollover is there? We like that. That's about perfect. Now, if I was on an 8-inch rim, that rollover hump would be bigger because that rim would be in tighter. If it was a 10-inch rim, that would not have any bulge there or any protection. It would almost be basically straight. Um, straight from the rim, straight down. So if I hit a curb, I'd be in trouble if I had 10-inch rims on this. Now, if you were going with a 35 12 50, you could go to a 10-inch rim or I would still stay with a 9-inch. reason we went with 9-inch rims on here is it gives me the option to run these tires perfectly like we want or to even go to a 35 12 50 and still have perfectly exactly what we want so for us nine inch rim was perfect so once you figure out that tire size rim diameter size and width next is the offset the offset is actually the last thing you're going to figure because they cut a lot of rims come in many different offsets but you will need to know that because that offset is what is going to determine how far that wheel sticks out from there. I, I mean, there's a lot of people out there, you see them where the whole tire, you know, they got a tire this wide and it's sticking out this far out of the truck. That's not a look that we're going for. All that's going to do is throw mud and crap all over our truck and it's going to be a pain in the butt in the woods and it's not what we're after. If you are, you'll want to know the offset that puts them out there that far and you'll want to be able to research that to make sure that when you turn, you can actually use them. Again, <laughs> not an easy answer not a one size fits all of all the things you'll do to your vehicle this is the one that requires you to do some hours of research dive in see what other people have done 
Find out what's going to work. It, this is, but the information is all there for you on all the forums. Okay, doesn't matter if you're a truck or a Ram guy, F one hundred and fifty guy, Super Duty or Super Duty. I don't care what you have. There's a forum out there, and people are doing these things to them, and they've done the trial and error for you. They have examples. They can show you. They tell you if they work. They rub. They don't. So you can find all of this information online. But it it, it requires a little research, and it's worth you taking the time to do it because this wheel decision is not cheap. Okay, you're going to spend a couple grand in wheels and uh, tires and combos for your truck. You know, probably a couple grand. Uh, that's what we, I think we paid for this. I don't remember exactly. Um, but, you know, you're going to be somewhere between $1,500 and $2,000 for rims and wheels. and uh, Or wheels and tires. And when you put that together, that's a lot of money. It's a very expensive upgrade. So make sure you get it right and you do that research on all those factors. Tire size, tire and rim diameter, rim width. And then offset for the rims for the w w rims to give you the look and stance you're looking for. So hopefully that's a good little tip for you. Hopefully it saves you some trouble and some headache. And I hope you enjoyed it. Be back with more stuff soon. Talk to you.